What's going on YouTube? Full Mash and the Green Gang here, bringing you another green to glass video. Pretty excited. Today we're gonna to be brewing up an English Ordinary Bitter. Pretty excited for this style. Um, I'll share the recipe here as well as in the, the description down below. Right now, let's uh, get the brewery rock and rolling, shall we? So Ordinary Bitter, not a beer that you see too, too often on, on YouTube, but two different reasons why I'm doing this. One, because I've always wanted to have one on tap. It's uh, winter time here where I am, so I figure something that you could have a few with, with a few friends over, uh, and not get totally sloshed. Sounds amazing to me. Plus, I've been really getting into the English style, so I told myself this was something I wanted to do more in 2021. Um, and then the second reason is I'm going to use this as a starter for an imperial stout, imperial oatmeal stout, which I can't wait for that brew day. I'll show you guys that. Um, I have a tasting video. It's going to be a beer that I'm going to rebrew. I brewed it earlier a few months ago. Uh, came out awesome, except I missed missed the final gravity. I didn't think I have enough uh, yeast in there to be able to make stuff happen. So we're going to go over that again, uh, rebrew it. But I'm going to use this as a starter. So we're going to brew up 10 gallons of this English bitter. And uh, we're using two different types of yeast. I'm curious to see how they're both going to play with this. So with that being said, we're going to be using Imperial's Pub yeast. Pretty excited. I've heard great things about it. And I figured what better uh, beer uh, to actually use this on than an English bitter, uh, a good style pub ale, which is awesome, um, in, in English style pub ale, as well as... Um, I'm going to use SO4 in the other batch, so pretty excited for that. So I want to see the differences between the two. I know they're both English strains, I know they're both a little bit different, uh, but really curious to see what those differences will be, might be, um, and whatnot. And plus, it's going to be nice to have uh, something a little bit lower ABV on tap after all the uh, heavy holiday beers that we've had over the last few months. So let's talk about recipe design. So this is going to be a spin on an English bitter, um, using the ingredients I already have, um, getting it as close to as I can with what I do have. So my recipe is going to use 85% Thrall Family Pale Ale Malt. You can use Maris Otter, which probably would be uh, preferred. I'd love to rebrew this with Maris Otter and see how it is, see what the differences are with it. 5% White Wheat Malt and 5% of Care Munich Type 3. We're throwing that in there as well. A um, Couple different recipes I've been, I've been reading saying that this is a good malt bill to use. And then I'm also using less than a percent, or in this case, uh, to brew up um, 10 gallons of this, two ounces or 0.7% of Carafa 2. I know it's not traditional. I know, I know, you people are gonna be like, why you don't need to use that in there? Um, I just wanna change the color a little bit to get around 9, 10 SRM. Um, I just have this thought in my head of having this imperial pint, a little bit darker, um, creamy head, tan head, um, and it's gonna be just something you can sip on. Um, especially with the upcoming uh, sporting events in February happening, I feel like it'd be nice to have a beer like this on tap to throw a few back while you're watching the game. And also we're doing, oh boy, I wanna say 2.7% uh, of just plain table sugar to help dry things out a little bit and also bump up the ABV. We're going to be shooting for a gravity of 1042. Uh, should give us around a uh, ABV of 4.2% ABV. Hop side of things, I'm gonna be using Magnum to Bitter to the tune of 17 IBU. In the last 10 minute of the boil, I'm using eight IBU of Fuggle. In my case, that's gonna be two ounces for this 10 gallon batch. 
So we got the system up and running. We got up to strike temp. We're about to dough in. So brew with me, won't you? Today we'll be mashing at 153 degrees for 60 minutes. I'm not sure if you can see behind me, the color already, we're probably five minutes into the mash, is amazing. Um, this will clear up over the course of a 60 minute mash as it recirculates. This system has been working awesome for me. I'm getting around 73% efficiency with it. Can't complain, it's made wonderful beers. I've had this uh, set up now for, I wanna say three years so far. Uh, the newest addition though to it is the new kettle, that's a 20 gallon kettle. Uh, looking to be able to do half barrel batches of probably low OG beers. We're gonna see over the course of the summer if we can max out the mash ton and what OG we can actually hit. Uh, that is a 12 and a half gallon stainless mash ton. I've, I've put at least 25 pounds of grain in there before uh, to make a gallon batch of Resilience IPA. It smells so good in here already can't complain smells amazing what's better than brewing nothing duh Time to take our grav reading. We're supposed to be right around 1037. Let's see where we're at. Oh, that's beautiful. Overshot it by one gravity point, 1038. I'll take it, not bad at all. This system's very repeatable. I love it. If you guys have any questions, if you wanna build your own, or if you wanna pick my brain about how it's a two kettle rim system works let me know i'm here we'll uh, discuss it. i'd love to talk about it love this system it works great let's get to the boil into our first hop edition oh by the way i had to change things up the hops ran out of magnum so i subbed it for 57 grams of willamette we're gonna use that instead i'll see you guys in the boil two ounces of willamette uh first wart hopping trying to make that bitterness bitterness a little bit smoother so we're getting close to the end of the boil. Um, as you can tell, it's getting pretty foggy in here. I'm trying to figure out a better way uh, for a ventilation system or I want to figure out some sort of steam condenser. Um, I did see the one from Spike Brewing and that does look pretty promising. I'm pretty excited about it. I saw that. I think that one may be worth it. Um, I have a Concord kettle here. Uh, work, work, works great. I was thinking about seeing if I can retrofit the lid with my own sort of steam slayer, if I can figure that out. Um, cause right now I have that guy, which is a little bathroom fan works. Okay. It doesn't have all the CFMs. It was um, a fan. I found a friend gave it to me. He said, you see if you can use this, it works. Okay. Not the best, but it works all right to help re uh, release some of the steam in here. Um, I usually run a dehumidifier 24 seven all the time it stays around 45% humidity. Um, so it's not terrible. Just, uh, if you guys have the steam slayer or a steam condenser, let me know what you think of it. I'm really curious as to what your thoughts are, if it's worth it. Um, I think it's gonna help out, especially when I brew inside in the basement, it won't get everything all steamy in here, very humid and whatnot, but let me know. For our second hop edition, we're adding two ounces of Fuggles. In they go. Boom, 10 minutes till the end of the boil. Checking our final gravity here, uh, aiming for 1042. Let's check it out, let's see where we're at. Oh, that is beautiful. Looks like it's 1043, I'm over a little bit. That's fine, that'll work, that'll be perfect. Might mean a little slight bump in ABV, but won't be terribly too, too much. Really stoked how this come out. We're gonna chill, uh, get things going into the fermenters and we'll pitch the yeast.
right, so here we are, Imperial's A09 pub, gonna go in the carboy, and then SO4 into the bucket fermenter. Then we got, then we get SO4 going into the bucket fermenter. Just gonna pitch it right in. It's always worked for me that way. All right, guys, and that. That is a wrap. Thanks for following me along this brew day. Let's check out and see how it tastes. You know what time it is. Time for the tasting. Let's go pour ourselves a pint. These beers have been cold conditioning in my keyser for the last two weeks. Carbonated them to around two volumes of CO2, maybe just a hair under, so it kind of replicates more of a cask ale as how uh, these, tra these traditionally would be served. Let's check out the appearance. So one is clearing up a little bit quicker than the other. This batch with Imperial's A09 Pub is a little bit clearer versus uh, the batch fermented with SO4, I've noticed that. Um, Color's the same, head's the same, head retention is awesome in these. Not bad at all. Very pretty, very good looking beers. This is exactly what I was trying to go for as far as appearance, the color of it. I think that 0.7% of the Carafa 2 helped uh, in the color in this. This is exactly what I was looking for. Let's go to the aroma. The batch with Imperial's A09 Pub. Uh, very faint fruitiness you can pick uh, you can pick that up I'd say that's kind of more yeast arrived than it is through the hops although this is my first time using fuggles but yeah nice pleasant bready aroma to it a little bit of some fruitiness in there everything that I was expecting this to be let's check out the SO4 batch similar aroma I'm not picking anything significantly different out of this one. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, I mean these these are more similar than they are different. Let's uh, go on to the taste. Great low carbonation. Nothing too prickly as far as the CO2 goes and what's what's actually in here. Some of the breadiness comes through, which is which is terrific. That's kind of what I was really aiming for. And then you have the earthiness of the Fuggles, which is a very pleasant flavor in this style like I enjoy it completely this is uh, very very close to what I was what I was going for
Mm, delicious. It's good. It's enough flavor to keep it interesting. You don't get bored of it. Sometimes in the summer, I'll brew a couple light lagers and they are just as light as they can be. And sometimes they're, they're just made for mass consumption, not made for anything else. And I get, I, I, I'll find myself getting bored of the flavor of um, a super light lager because there just isn't much there. This is interesting enough where it almost reminds me of a lager-like characteristic to it. It's just very clean, it's very crisp. Um, I think that's also owed to the higher sulfate levels that we used in this, but absolutely perfect. I, I, I like this. this, I'm definitely gonna brew this each winter as we look forward to, to springtime. Something to have a few of, not heavy, uh, came out to 4.1%, um, exactly what we were looking for. So couldn't be happier with this one. Now let's try SO4 and we'll compare. So it is I really don't know if I'd be able to pick these two apart. They're they're that similar to me. Same, same characteristics. The breading notes do come through. You get the fruitiness of the hops, the earthiness of them, and uh, it has that. Maybe because we're using uh, fuggle and they're earthy, um, and sometimes um, herbal is the word that I'm looking for. It was herbal. You would also use similar hops in a lager. I think that's what I'm, I'm picking up. It's very nice, it's very drinkable, it's very crisp. And I thought for sure we'd notice a big difference between the two, because I know they're both English strains, but I don't believe they're the same strain. And I know their description says it'll bring out more fruity esters. As weird as the sound, I want to say this one is a little bit more crisp to me versus the SO4 batch. I would say this one is ever so slightly cleaner. So they're, they're, they're more similar than they are different. I don't know if I'd be able to pick these two out between a whole triangle test. They're that close. If I didn't have Imperial A09 Pub on hand and I just had SO4, it'll work beautifully in a pinch uh, to make this awesome beer. Plus. It ended up being a terrific starter for the Imperial Oatmeal Stout that I made. Keep an eye out for that video. And as always, please like and subscribe. There's a ton of new content coming to this channel. Stay tuned. You're going to want to watch it. See you guys in the next one.